to find very real is crumbling down. It's falling apart. So you're frightened. You're freaked out. Or what's going to happen to you? From something which is not real, but is very real to you. So we can't say it's not real because it's choking you to death. But you have to examine its, its core. You have to get into the roots of it. Have anyone has any questions? Do you want to unmute yourself and ask me a question? Or you want to wave at me or write on the chat box? Let's see what we got here. Can, can you tell something more about Siva? Can you tell something more about how your uh, experience is of the Dhammas? Yeah. Well, who, what's your name? Siva San, I'm not, so, not in the unfortunately. I don't have a camera. Yeah. Hi, Ava. So what was your question? I didn't hear you. If, if you could tell something more about how it will be, I mean, what are you experiencing after your practices? How, how it will be what? What do you experience your life after the Nebdam practices? Which you are asking us to do. Okay, let me see if I understand your question correctly, okay? I'm going to repeat it. So, what do I experience? How do I live my life, right? How do I experience my life? Yes, correct. Right. So, it's basically quiet. That's what it is. The, I witness the outside world chaotic and the inside world is quiet. And of course, every once in a while something arises because things don't always go my way and you just have to deal with it accordingly to what is. So if there is any kind of chaos appears, you deal with it, but then it doesn't continue. If something arises, and as it rises, you deal with whatever it is, but then it falls back and it becomes quiet again. It doesn't linger around to the next day and next day and next day. You deal with what you have to deal with in that moment, and then it's over. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, hey, can I ask a question? Sure, yeah, hi. Uh, hi, uh, earlier on you talked about uh, mantra and karma. Can you talk uh, more about that, please? Yeah, I was really, when we were meditating, I was saying that you are not, you don't need with this particular meditation, bringing yeah. your attention, when you bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts, what is there before you think? Where do they come from? When you investigate it, then you come to this very quiet place. As you're shifting your attention in that direction. So then you don't need to use a mantra when you're meditating or bringing your attention on your breath or anything like that because your attention goes directly into the source of your thoughts, which is silence. So that's what I meant by that. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm not saying this is, everybody has to do it. I'm just suggesting it. 
uh, because then your meditation becomes effortless. You don't have to put any effort into it. So, okay. all right. Then regarding your second question, karma, uh, can you be a little bit more specific on that? No, because uh, earlier on you mentioned karma and I didn't hear you properly. So I just wanted to, to ask you about your opinion in that because I heard you said karma. Right. Yeah. The... Um, it's been a, a thousands of years or millions of years cycle of the the mind has has somehow this I thought this mind rose out of nowhere. Of course, it's the divine's will because nothing happens without Ishwara. The Lord God has to want something to happen. Otherwise, nothing will happen. You can't even move your finger if it's not the will of that. Will of so, who? I beg your pardon? Uh, will of who? The will of the one that has created everything. The will of God. Allah. Oh, okay. Okay. It's the will of the oneness that things happen. So... In this, there is this I thought, there is this notion of me, of someone who's got this mind, this thinking process which is happening. And this thing was, it arose, it was created, it just came. As it was created, it it brings this notion, this feeling of separated, separation. That I am born, I'm on this planet, I am someone, I'm a person, this is my identity, and I'm separated from everything else. This is not real, it's illusory. It appears to be that way, and it feels that way, but it's not real. Because there has never been any kind of separation of anything from anything else. But in this world, in this appearance that it looks like it's separated, this person is going to come and go. It's going to recycle going through this process, this wheel of coming and going and coming and going. That's what I meant by the karmic wheel. Karmic, okay. the karma, right, exactly. So this keeps happening until at one point it's rare it doesn't happen for a lot of people that's why you keep seeing what's going on but at one point who knows through the grace the grace of god the grace of guru all of a sudden the self-inquiry uh notion part of our existence kicks in means that at one point a mechanism awakened. Now you may have come and gone a million times, it doesn't matter, but we're just talking about this life right now here. Something has triggered inside you. Something has made you interested to come, for example, to this meeting or pulls you to go to India to find your guru or to find your spiritual teacher or to seek whether your spiritual teacher, your guru is within its inner guidance or you find it in the other world or you found a book or somehow you are, what happens is the mechanism is triggered, something has awakened and for the first time in our lives, our attention is starting to go inwards. Means we're questioning ourselves. We're questioning the nature of our existence. 